Hi everyone, this is Dr. Allison DeBardo Goggin with Little Black Bag Medicine, and today I wanted to come to you and talk to you about autoimmune conditions because it's something that is so prevalent in the United States that somewhere over 50 million women are affected with this. Somewhere about one third of every physician's practice is having these patients show up with autoimmune issues, but they're so hard to recognize. There's no conventional treatment except for big pharma drugs, which are very lucrative, but they're not making a difference in these women's lives. So I work with a lot of people who have autoimmune issues across the board. And what's really difficult is that all of these different types of autoimmune issues have such broad ranges of symptoms or how they show up. And then we have this strict uh, list of symptoms and then, all right, well, this is lupus and this is osteoarthritis and this is the, but those symptoms vary and they actually show up in all kinds of places. So when we're looking up the thyroid, well, thyroid issues are rare in certain types of lupus, but they're actually there. They're still there. And so these diseases often get overlooked and these women get turned away and they're like, oh, you're fine, oh, here's some antidepressants, we don't know why this is happening to you. And then even their natural physicians like chiropractors or dietitians are like, you just need to take some B vitamins and you just need to take this multivitamin and you'll be fine without ever addressing what's known as in functional medicine, we call it the splinters of these issues, these bigger pictures. So when we say it's a splinter, it's because that once you take that splinter out, the body can heal, the inflammation can go away, everything can get back to normal. So is it possible for people who suffer with autoimmune diseases to get back to normal or themselves? I think it's possible for some people. I think for most people, it's just awesome to stop it where it is in its tracks, which is a huge goal to uh, just really allow the body to start healing and start working on reversing that process. But the key is, why is this process happening in your body? So that's what we have to figure out. We say we test, we don't guess, because we want to know exactly what's going on in the body. I see a lot of women throw ANA markers and their doctors are like, eh, it's not that high, you're fine. But really never actually figure out why their body is throwing these markers or take that deeper look or they just say, hey, your cholesterol is high, you need to eat better. And that's not the freaking issue, people. So all autoimmune diseases essentially are the same. Um, they just have different root causes. So what makes them the same is that they're attacking, your body is attacking itself. So that organ, um, like diabetes, one, it attacks the pancreas. MS is attacking the brain and the nervous system. Lupus attacks the liver or the joints or many other places, but they all show up very similarly and very different. So what we have to do next is um, really focus on what that cause could be for that specific person. And I have a few of them written down. So the number one is emotional chronic stress and the inability to cope with stress. And that big thing, that big coping mechanism is not a bottle of wine because we fall into that bottle of wine and then we wake up the next day, or maybe you're hung over and then we do it all over again. And that's not a good coping mechanism. So when we don't have those coping mechanisms, our brain starts to get overloaded and it gets over-functioning, just like with the adrenals, just like with stress, and then our body crashes. So we really just have to monitor stress, work on our coping mechanisms. Other things are poor nutrition, as always, and frankenfoods. So many people who eat gluten just stop eating gluten. I, ha I can give you my top 10 theories on research on why gluten is affecting our body, but long story short, it's not because of celiac. We don't, we don't really know why, but we just know when people stop eating it, they feel better and all of these diseases start going away. And then, of course, there's individual sensitivities, um, food allergies, GI stress, leaky gut, first thing we fix on everybody, right? Every class that we do here, I'm like, oh, fix the leaky gut, fix the leaky gut. Hormones, leaky gut. Uh, thyroid, leaky gut. Stress, leaky gut. So we have to fix that first. Hormonal stress, which is one of the reasons that we think that women suffer more with autoimmune issues because it's an estrogen overload and that is causing our body to revolt. 
inflammatory and infectious stress. And a lot of time these deep seated bacterial and viral and fungal infections are what's causing these autoimmunes because the viruses and bacteria mimic our cells. It's called genetic mimicry. And our body will attack it and thinking that our tissues actually have the same um, genetics or transparency it will go into it but then that's why our body starts attacking itself when we have these deep-seated viruses or issues and then toxic stress is a huge one so when we think about uh, what we're breathing in our air what we're drinking in our water uh, the makeup that we use that has a lot of estrogen in it and hormones that that is why our body becomes so toxic, so overloaded. Um, and I know we could argue about there's no such thing as detoxification, but anyone who has ever taken a good whole food nutritional supplement like the one I have behind me will tell you their body starts clearing and releasing. And as the gut heals, it will start to release as well. So let's talk, so I kind of want to skip over the cognitive stress for another time. I have a ton of solutions for that. Um, the biggest thing to focus on is watching your inner dialogue. So when you start saying things like, oh, my life is horrible. No one ever takes care of me. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Um, I'm worthless. Nobody loves me. That's just sending a message to your body. So when we look at autoimmune issues, from an emotional standpoint with either EFT or tapping or uh, cognitive work, emotional work, we're looking at how we feel about ourselves. So if you hate yourself, you're telling your body to hate itself. And how is the body going to enact hate within itself? It's going to turn on itself. It's going to eat itself. It's going to um, really just start tearing your body apart. And that's what autoimmune issues are. So that's why we start there. And we get some good therapy. We talk about tapping because we need to be able to release those toxic emotions so the body can stop attacking itself and getting that constant, oh my God, I'm a horrible person. Oh my God, I did something wrong again. And then stop that cycle within our body. And then obviously that goes hand in hand with coping mechanisms and figuring out when you do feel stressed, what is a healthier way? Is it going for a walk? Is it exercising to get that tension out of your nervous system? Is it taking a bath? Is it reading a book? Is it talking with your partner? What does that look like for you? Um, we just have to stay away from sugar, carbs, smoking, soda, all of those things that we immediately reach for food-wise. Um, and I have a really awesome program for you for that one. So splinter number three is poor nutrition because our nutrition tells our DNA how to behave and as our cells replicate and they're not getting that good nutrition, you have there's not a lot of hope for that. So we can talk about nutrition all day long. Frankenfoods is uh, like GMO. It's, they're banned all, all out throughout the country, but when we take those into our body, our body doesn't know what to do with it and it turns against us. Um, and what I'm really trying to figure out is how I want to talk to you about more solutions because the biggest thing that comes down to is gut, number one. So something like skin issues, hives, rashes, um, and especially with headaches, those are often gut-related issues because of food sensitivities. So what that means for you is you have a few options. You can do a pretty awesome, not awesome, elimination diet technique, and I'll post that link in the comments for you um, from one of the physicians that I follow. And just take, give your body a break from every type of food. Basically, it's kind of close to Whole30, I would think. And you're just giving your body a break to get all of those antigens out, to get your immune system cleared back out, and then slowly start adding foods back in. So that way you can see if you have that sensitivity. And you go back and you say, oh, I had a glass of milk and I immediately got a headache. Wow, I never realized that was causing my headaches. Another way to do it is to do a blood test where we test your blood against some foods to see how your body reacts and then start working on eliminating those foods. And what's cool is once you figure out what those foods are, you don't have to eliminate them for life. We really just want to eliminate them for three to six months, depending on how severe the issue is. And then as we start working on healing the gut, your body will decrease the sensitivity um, and you can start eating those foods again in moderation. Um, lectins, molecular. Okay, again, just gluten. I mean, if you can get gluten and dairy out of your diet for um, 
like one month, you're going to notice a huge, huge difference. And the big splinters for GI health. So you're like, well, what is causing the GI, GI issue that's causing the autoimmune issue? And it really comes down to stress because that affects our bacteria and our flora, alcohol, antibiotics. Uh, surprisingly for most people, acid blockers, um, proton pump inhibitors will actually work on the stomach and then it works on the small intestines. So the small intestines starts growing bacteria where it shouldn't be. And that causes things like SIBO, which then cause gas and flatulence and pain and bloating. And you don't digest the food because that's where we absorb our nutrition is our small intestines. Um, Long-term use of steroids, eating disorders, overuse of laxatives um, is a really big deal because that um, affects our body long-term opens you up for infections, parasites, for really that's where those deep-seated um, infections take hold of. Uh, trans fats is a huge part for GI splinters, food allergies, and junk food. So we just have to really focus on looking at that big picture and putting it all together for everyone because when we look at the gut, we also want to look at acid reflux or while you're digesting your food. Are you able to take in those good nutrients? Because you might be eating the super clean diet, but you're not digesting, you're not absorbing, you're not getting anything out of it. So you still have the anemia, you still feel weak, you, um, you're, nothing's healing, and you're like, this program doesn't work. Well, of course it's not working because you're not digesting, you're not using the nutrition that, that you're eating. Um, stress and adrenal burnout. Um, I have a number of talks on that and on my website I have an adrenal versus thyroid quiz so you can see which um, organ is actually might be the source of the issue for you. So if you're having stress issues like waking up in the middle of the night, not being able to fall asleep, different types of um, insomnia, constipation, panic attacks, mental fogginess, those are all related to the adrenals, which then causes um, cortisol, depending on where you are, which is why we do a saliva test to see where you are, to either ramp up to suppress the immune system, which then makes the brain go haywire or ramp down, and that means you're, you know nothing else is functioning and your body kind of falls apart, PMS type symptoms, uh, estrogen overload, things like that. It's definitely a game to play because a lot of the symptoms of adrenal overload are the same as adrenal fatigue. So we do saliva testing where you spit in a tube four times a day to measure your cortisol throughout the day. It should be higher in the morning and then slowly come down throughout the day so at night it's lower so that way you can go to sleep and rest easily and then it raises throughout the night so you wake up happy. Um, most people don't feel that way. So when we do that type of testing, we can see exactly where the issue is. Is it diet? Is it coming from your brain? Is it coming from your foods that you're sensitive to? We can figure all these things out through testing, but each person is different. So everyone who comes to me with uh, autoimmune issues is not going to get the same treatment. There's no cookbook for this because we have to figure out which splinter is causing the issue. And for most people, of these 10 that we're talking about, they're going to have 8 out of 10. And we just slowly have to unravel each one. Hormonal distress um, is often linked to sugar, alcohol, carbohydrates because that causes sugar imbalances in our blood that leads to insulin resistance, which leads to then leptin resistance, which then throws off all of our female hormones. So it's a really big cycle. So just because you have PMS doesn't mean that you need to chase the PMS or infertility or PCOS. That's not necessarily a hormone issue. It's also a metabolic issue. So we need to figure that out for you. We need to get rid of um, fake hormones in your environment. So what that means is clean makeup because the biggest thing that so people always talk to me when I first started teaching oil classes is, well, there's just a little bit of chemicals in it and it's safe and it's fine to use because it's just a little bit. And I'm like, you're right. That is just a little bit in makeup. It's just a little bit in your hair care. So let's imagine you wake up in the morning and you're a person who showers in the morning. So you wake up, turn on the shower, you're using shampoo, conditioner, probably a hair product, right? A gel or a mousse, um, soap toothpaste, and if you're a woman, 
let's not even talk about makeup, foundation, concealer, how many different types of eyeshadow, mascara, lipstick, blush, bronzer, contour, the list goes on and on. So, and then toothpaste, and then lotions. And so what started with this one thing is just fine becomes an overwhelming, toxic load every single second of every single day because now you're living it with it in your hair all day long. You're living with this makeup on your face and your face is just absorbing it, um, which is why you have to apply makeup for night as well because your body is absorbing all of those chemicals that mimic estrogen, which is throwing off your brain, it's throwing off your adrenals, it's throwing off your gut, it's throwing off your immune system. So focusing on a non-toxic lifestyle will help your body heal, which then we can go into I mean, the most important thing right away is your personal care products, your toothpaste, your shampoos, your makeup. The next step is cleaners. So I use everything doTERRA for cleaning because it's non-toxic. I'm not worried about chemicals. My kids can use it. The On Guard Concentrate Cleaner cleans everything. Bathrooms, floors, sinks. Doesn't do mirrors, but I make a spray for that because you're constantly breathing that in and touching it and then it's on the surface. So it's better to have something like doTERRA and essential oil products where when it's on the surface it's cleaning the surface rather than leaving bleach and Clorox and other nasty chemicals that you're constantly touching while it's on the surface and then always absorbing. So think about the things that you're always absorbing and look, you know, one thing at a time. Don't you don't have to go out and spend $800 right now. Just look at one thing that you could change this month. Maybe it's hair care. Maybe the next time you run out of shampoo, you buy a different bottle instead of the stuff that you've already used. So just slowly change that over and you're going to notice a huge, huge, huge difference in the way your hormones function. And instead of chasing your PMS every month and putting oils on and taking medications and taking birth control, you're actually going to be in charge of it and ahead of what's happening. Um, I love talking about hormones because it's, it's super easy to fix. And the same goes for men as well, because when we start looking at toxins in men who also have autoimmune issues, we're talking about uh, low libido, which is really common, frequent urination, impotence, lack of drive or sense of purpose, fatigue, decreased muscle mass, losing places, hair in places other than your head, um, and an increase in abdominal fat. So when men's bodies become stressed, they also, um, they have the same symptoms. It just looks a little bit different. Um, emotionally, they just shut down instead of overreacting. So that's a really big sign that they are having hormonal stress and that needs to be addressed through toxicity, through the adrenals and through the gut as well. Um, Inflammation, inflammation is everywhere, chronic stress, sugar, um, work, carbs, sweeteners, hidden food allergies, sedentary lifestyle, nutritional, right, it's everything. So getting the inflammation down, we get that done by water, we get that done by movement, we get that done by eating healthier, doing those elimination diets, figuring out what foods your body prefers. Um, and then one of the last things we need to talk about is low-grade infections. So people who have these constant low-grade fevers and they're always sick and they're like, I don't know, I'm just, I'll just keep taking this medication and though they're on the next round of antibiotics. And the question is like really, why is that happening? Um, and then fixing it because so many people who have um, these constant low-grade stealth infections I'm sorry, I'm getting messages and it's totally throwing my brain off. Um, it's a precursor to autoimmune diseases. So that's an, a warning that your body is really struggling and you need to focus on the infection. What type of infection is it? Because you're going to treat it differently medically and holistically. So if it's bacterial, is it viral, which is really common with the Epstein-Barr virus? Strep is a common bacterial virus. Um, and then yeast and fungus is huge, especially if you're having skin rashes and eczema and autoimmune type rashes like scleroderma and lupus and those butterfly rashes on the face and cystic acne. It's all related, again, to the gut, but it's also related to these deep-seated infections that aren't going to go away until you start tearing up your diet, tearing up that inflammation, and getting rid of these infections. So it is really important um, 
to get tested to see what type of infection if it's one suspected. One of the most common ones, again, is that small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Um, and one of the easiest ways is to say, hey, when you take probiotics, do probiotics make you sick? And people are like, yeah, every time I take those pro, oh, I get bloated, I get gassy, and I can't eat, I feel like crap, probiotics don't work. Well, what's actually happening is those bacteria in your small intestines that aren't supposed to be there are eating up those probiotics for lunch and breakfast and dinner and having a party. And it's making you sick. So it's like, okay, don't take probiotics. You need to get rid of this infection, which we can do with herbs, we can do with oils. There are medical protocols that will help with that. And there's an easy test to do, it's just a breath test. So that's one thing, H. pylori in the stomach, we have to check for because anything that is a constant attack on your immune system, like a deep-seated infection, like chronic stress, like food, is just wearing it down piece by piece. And then your body rebels against itself and it starts hurting itself with these autoimmune issues. So chronic sinusitis, um, that's really fun because... It's, a, it's an issue that everybody talks about, especially right now, cold and flu season, that, oh, I always have allergies, oh, I always have sinusitis, oh, I always just do the spray and I'm always on the antibiotics. But what we found is that um, the Mayo Clinic did a study and found fungus in the sinuses of 96% of patients with chronic sinusitis. So what does that mean? We're treating it wrong because these antibiotics aren't addressing the fungus. We're not addressing the root cause of the sinusitis, and not allergies. It's because you have mold growing all over your body and it should be there, but it shouldn't be there that much. That is constantly making you sick. And when mold is there that much, like yeast and candida, it's because your immune system is so suppressed. And we see that a lot often because medical practitioners will say, oh, that only happens in severely immunopressed cancer patients because of the chemo and the drugs. But it can happen to anyone because we're not reading the blood work right. And once you read that blood work right and you see that ANI, ANA titers go up and you're seeing the neutrophils and the white blood cell and everything starts to look a little crazy, you know there's a deep-seated infection in there and you can track it. So always keep your blood work with you um, for functional medicine consultations because we can see if it's how much it's changing throughout the days. Um, what else did I want to talk to you guys about? Um, toxic stress, we talked about that. Um, food additives, petrochemicals, heavy metals. Just really what it comes down to is just reframing this process of how we look at autoimmune issues. Don't accept defeat. You don't have to do that. You don't have to sit back and take a drug and continually get worse. There are so many options out there. But for you individually, we have to figure out why this is happening. We have to figure out which of those splinters do you have and start addressing them one by one as easily as we can. We have to get those tests done, whether it's food sensitivity, gut tests, checking out your gut um, your SIBO, everything, like looking at the real numbers for your thyroid to see is it coming from the thyroid or is it coming from the brain or the adrenals or the ovaries, like putting that huge picture together for you. And that's what we do in functional medicine. And we don't guess. Um, I mean, sometimes we have to guess, right? But we're really just working on uncovering those layers for you. So what I have going on starting in January 2018 that I would like to extend to you guys is that a personalized program I'm going to do a three-month program because this, I want to work with you. I don't want to leave you hanging and just do this one time and be like, oh, you'll be fine. Just take these supplements because that's not really how it works. We got to focus on diet, lifestyle, ask your questions. You're going to get a number of multiple consultations, weekly check-ins, a personalized diet plan, personalized supplements, and then any other testing would be extra. But if we could get it done through those first consultations, we will. So I'm here to take care of you. I'm here to help you figure out what your body is doing and how we can best support it so we can get to the root cause, take out those splinters, and you can start healing your body. So if you have any questions, uh, comment, message me. I will post the links to the, um, I have a liver bliss uh, protocol and a uh, recipes for those elimination diets that look a little scary. So that way you can start seeing what would work for your body, and we can meld that in together. All right, everyone, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.